Oh crap, it's Advent. I haven't got a plan, what am I going to do? Hmm. 24 days in Advent, 26 letters of the alphabet. I suppose better than nothing, innit? I've got all these games to cover, well, let's begin. It's time for the Broken Circus Advent Calendar. First and possibly only. Now I hate to retread old ground, but I suppose it's as good a place to start as any. Well here's a good start. A game I've already covered on the channel. Five years ago in fact. I had some misgivings about it in the past, saying that it hadn't aged well. For the most part my thoughts haven't changed all that much in terms of looking back at its gameplay. But I find I'm a lot more forgiving of it considering it's the first real example of a survival horror game. And a 3D one at that. Just to clear something up from that old video, mainly for my own sake, I hadn't configured DOSBox properly for the game, which is why it ran like treacle down Everest in the middle of a particularly chilly winter. Once you get that sorted, the game becomes infinitely more playable. Upon starting the game, you're fully introduced to what Alone in the Dark is about, by way of a brooding monologue from whichever of the two characters you've picked. Luckily, devil worship makes me smile, so this is my idea of a paid vacation. Then it's into the mansion, and I must say this intro cutscene is genius. It essentially shows the places you'll end up going to, but in reverse, and it's worth paying attention here as certain traps and items are visible as your esteemed protagonist heads on up to the attic. And then, it's all up to you. Let's get my main complaint of Alone in the Dark out of the way. The combat. Within the first 15 minutes of the game you could very well be treated to 4 or 5 fist fights with the locals, and the combat basically consists of hold space and then hold up. There's not a lot of nuance to it, and winning a fight can be a bit of a crapshoot. Either you stunlock the enemy, or the enemy stunlocks you. I wasn't exactly expecting Street Fighter 2 levels of combat, but I'm sure they could have done better than this. I appreciate the combat is supposed to be a desperation move when there are no other choices, but you're forced into the situation more often than is necessary. Supposedly the sequel puts a lot more emphasis on combat, which is why I haven't touched it yet. Otherwise, this game presents one hell of an atmosphere. Each room is pre-rendered and populated with 3D objects, a little bit like watching a cartoon. And the way the backgrounds are illustrated gives a huge sense of terror, like there's always something out to get you. Or possibly watching you. Or both. There's a lot of interaction with the environment as well. For example, the first puzzle involves blocking a window with a wardrobe to prevent a monster from breaking through the glass. I have to question this monster's design, it's like a dog and a chicken at a freaky evening. If you don't already know that a trap's coming up, it can easily catch you out. Fortunately the game allows you to save at any point, and save you must. It'd be nice to have a quick save key so you're not taken out of the game as much, but hey, it was 1992. Sometimes the camera angles can get in the way somewhat, but for the most part they're reasonably placed. I particularly like it when the angle changes to show something about to happen. For example when the chicken dog breaks through this window. They like doing that, don't they? Sadly, I got a bit stuck at this point, because I either couldn't work out how to get past this purple creature, or I wasn't patient enough to keep sticking and moving. But I want to leave off by mentioning how influential Elon in the Dark is to the gaming industry. It essentially spawned a brand new genre, which was later popularised by Capcom's long-running Resident Evil series. It's also probably responsible, in part, for all these survival games that we get all over Steam these days. Verdict? Worth a go.